Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our webinar this afternoon, looking into what's new in the second edition of our Maths Methods and Specialist Subjects for Queensland, Units 1 and 2, along with some support for the syllabus implementation. My name is Kim Keane and I'm the State Manager here in Queensland. Before we get started today, in the spirit of reconciliation, Cambridge University Press acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders, past and present, and we extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Our webinar will be delivered in three parts this afternoon. Our first presenter will be Joel Speranza, who we're very fortunate to have as a consultant on the second edition series this year. Joel's a Queensland senior mathematics teacher and head of department who's passionate about building a community of both mathematics teachers and learners. In 2020, during the COVID lockdowns, Joel was awarded the QCT Excellence in Teaching Award for his work in providing video resources supporting the senior mathematics curriculum via his website, which we all very likely know, uh, mathsvideosaustralia.com. Joel is currently working with the Toowoomba Catholic Schools Office, delivering specialist mathematics hybridly to students from eight different regional schools. Joel will be taking us through an appendix chapter that he has written for the Methods and Specialist books that provides guidance for students in preparing their PSMT responses. So the second part to the webinar will be with our lead author, Michael Evans. And Michael is an experienced mathematics teacher, educator and author. He's been the lead author for many mathematics textbooks, including the previous editions of Mathematical Methods and Specialist Mathematics for the Cambridge Senior Maths for Queensland series. He has a PhD in mathematics from Monash University and a diploma of education from La Trobe University. He currently holds the honorary position of senior consultant at the Australian Mathematical Sciences Institute at the University of Melbourne. He was head of mathematics at Scotch College in Melbourne and has also taught in public schools and in recent years has returned to teaching. He's been very involved with curriculum development at both state and national levels. And in 1999, Michael was awarded an honorary doctorate of laws by Monash University for his contribution to mathematics education. Please know that during any part of the presentation, you can type any questions that you might have in the chat box and any questions we don't answer during the webinar, we will respond to during the following Q&A session where Michael, Joel, Scott and Cam, our publishers on the books, will be available for discussions. Without further ado, please welcome our first speaker this afternoon, Joel Speranza. Welcome, Joel. Thanks, Kim. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here, super excited to be working with Cambridge. Um, I always use Cambridge textbooks uh, through this through the old syllabus and into the new syllabus. And I was really excited when um, Cameron and, and Scott reached out and started asking about what we sort of needed in this new edition. And I said, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had a small appendix that could help teachers and students know what to do when it came to uh, PSMT? And they said, oh, great, why don't you write it? Um, and that's how it all got started, and, and that's what I've done. Um, so during my little presentation today, I want to talk about the changes to the assessment in this new syllabus because I think they're really exciting changes uh, and they open up a whole world of opportunities for teachers and students that we haven't had in the old syllabus and then talk about how I hope that um, PSMT appendix sort of fits into that uh, in supporting you in year 11 and then hopefully supporting you in year 12 as well. Uh, so talking about the changes to the assessment in the new syllabus, because on the face of it, they don't sound like massive changes, but they do really give us some uh, new freedoms as teachers. So in the old syllabus or in the current syllabus, the one we're doing right now, uh, we had an IA1 that had to come from unit three. We had an IA2 that had to cover all of the content from unit three. I believe we're the only syllabus that had that requirement, uh, and then an IA3 that covered all of the uh, content from Unit 4. Uh, now, new syllabus, much, much different. Our IA1 can come from any topic, Unit 3 or Unit 4. IA2, you only have to cover three out of five topics from Unit 3, and Unit 4, you only have to co cover three out of five topics. Now, this is obviously all year 12 um, 
These are all your 12 requirements. In year 11, it's very much a choose your own adventure. You can do whatever you like to do. Not surprisingly, most schools previously have tried to mirror whatever's happening in year 12 in their year 11. And I imagine a lot of us are going to be thinking right now about how we're going to implement year 11 um, and try to sort of mirror this new version of things rather than this old version. So speaking of the old version, um, this is what we ha have done as teachers in Queensland for the last four years. Um, basically, this is unit three, three topics here. And then we had unit four as like one big block. And then our assessment was these three items here, one, two, three. And then we would place these strategically depending on what school you're in. So most schools I saw would do something like putting unit one here, the, sorry, the PSMT here, doing some kind of rate of change PSMT. And then you had to do your IA2 after you'd covered all of the unit three content. And then, of course, covered all of the unit four content and did that. Um, now, this is, I'm using methods as my guide, but uh, people did similar things for specialist as well, for general as well. Um, now, there is a different version of this that I've seen and I've done myself personally, where you kind of swap IA1 here and you do your uh, PSMT on integrals and then you, uh, sorry, you do your exam and then you do your PSMT on integrals and then you do your IA3 here. So this was sort of your two options. Either you went this way or you went this way and there wasn't much else. I, I can't wait for someone in the chat to come in and tell me that they did it a totally different way. But not a great deal of options in the old or the current syllabus. Uh, the new syllabus, totally different though. And you really can think totally differently about how you do it. So I've put all of Unit 3 and all of Unit 4 for methods. We've still got our three assessment items. And so an example of something you might do would be to do your exam straight after having covered just three topics. So do your IA2 there. Um, that would be quite interesting for a lot of us. Some of us start uh, this stuff at the start of, at the term four year 11, which means that you could have your exam done in that term four. That would be probably the first time ever that someone's been able to do that. You might then do your IA1 on integrals using topics from Unit 3 and Unit 4. And then finally, you might do your IA3 down there somewhere, covering integrals and, and these two topics here. But the world is your oyster. You could do all sorts of things. So different example, you might do IA2 here and then cover a bunch of stuff and then do IA3 here. And then you might do trigonometry next, really doing things out of order and do a PSMT on trigonometry, flying foxes, etc. Uh, or you might do something like this. Uh, I'm looking forward to a PSMT on like binomial probability. And you could do that straight away. You could teach a little bit of discrete random variables, do a PSMT, and then do an exam on some of these topics. Even though I've covered them all, you wouldn't have to do them all and then a few of them, and then an exam, and then knock the rest over, and then do your external. And you could even do something like this, um, or, yeah, you could even do something like this, where you sort of cover all of IA2, and then do a little bit of stuff in an exam, and then wait until the very end to do your PSMT, again, on trigonometry. So I think it's a really exciting time, a uh, really exciting time to start thinking about your year 12 work, and then looking at how that's going to flow into year 11. So taking what that looks like in unit three and saying, okay, now that I've got all this freedom, what can I do with it in unit one and two? Um, along with that, another change, because I'm talking about the PSMT really is the one that I'm really interested in. Uh, the ISMG has totally changed. And if anyone was in a HOD forum with me um, last year, you will you would have heard me sort of a little bit upset about the new ISMG. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, this is not as good as the old one. But um, in doing all of the research for this PSMT, um, doing all the research for this appendix, 
I went to the QCAA and spent hours with them talking about this new ISMG. I spoke to lots of teachers. I spoke to lots of students. I read lots of subject reports, every subject report that the QCAA has put out. And I am a convert. The new ISMG is much, much better than the old ISMG. I'm happy to be proven wrong by it through all of these conversations with people. Um, so no distinct changes here. There's some different words here. Um, justified statements. I think that's probably better than documentation uh, when it came to formulate. Um, now, I was quite upset originally by the um, removal of discerning application from SOLVE, but I think these three dot points are much, much easier, much more clear cut, much more simple to teach to a student about what they all mean. So big, uh, big ups here. Um, evaluate has been broken into five dot points rather than three. Uh, every single um, teacher, I think, had essentially broken them into five de facto dot points anyway, uh, evaluating the reasonableness of results, assumptions and observations. So having actually done it on the page is, is much, much better. Um, and it does have a very clear, like, verified results that I quite like, uh, which I cover in the appendix, I think, in a really nice way, if I should say so myself. Um, and then we've got communicate. And there's no huge changes here, but I do think it is uh, a clearer way to go. So great new ISMG. Um really need to start thinking about bringing it into your year 11s. I know some people bring elements of the ISMG into year 7, 8, 9, and 10. So if you're doing that now, probably want to take a look at the new ISMG, figure out how to fit that into all of your prep in the younger years as well. Um, now, this is sort of a change that I've been thinking about over the last week or so, and I think it is a big one. Um, there's no time limit to the PSMT anymore. So previously it was four weeks, but now we're looking at, you can hand them the PSMT on the first day of year 12 and they can hand it in, you know, the day before uh, confirmation, I guess, if you want to turn the marking around really quickly. So four weeks, 10 weeks, it's up to you how long you let them have that PSMT for. Now, I think too long a time, would probably be problematic. I think too short a time would be problematic, but I do like that we've been unshackled and we can start thinking about it, particularly because we've been trying to mirror everything in year 12, in year 11. So in year 11 now, because you don't have this constraint, you can really explicitly teach students how to write a PSMT. And so year 11, if you hand them the PSMT and they've got it for a full term, you can spend time talking about each element of the PSMT and explicitly teaching them how to do it, which is where this comes in. Um, so this is the front page uh, draft version, I guess, of the appendix that's in the Cambridge textbooks, uh, General Methods and um, Specialist. And so it's really an appendix designed to explicitly teach students how to write a PSMT, give teachers places where they can refer students to and sort of build small lessons around um, regarding how to do all the elements of a PSMT. So a quick jump in. Uh, so a couple of things here. You'll note that throughout the uh, appendix, the new ISMG is talked about throughout. So that's every single page that you'll see that ISMG popping up again and again, explicitly showing students every page. Hey, you're writing this PSMT because you're trying to demonstrate these skills. Jump in. Um, let's talk about what it means to verify results. Let's talk about strengths and limitations. Uh, you'll see these neat little QR codes here. So it obviously wouldn't be, um, I guess, something that I made unless there were some videos involved. So on each of these pages, you'll find some QR codes where you can scan and go straight to a video, unpacking the page a little bit, doing a small mini lesson on the page. Um, now, this is something that I had a lot of fun with um, because even if it is just the methods textbook or the specialist textbook or the general textbook, what I found was that when I read the four subject reports for general maths, the four subject reports for 
maths methods, the four subject reports for specialist, there was gold in there. So uh, having read all 12 of those now, I found some really fantastic stuff, found really good student samples that I've been able to incorporate into this appendix. And you can point students to and say, hey, look, here are the elements that make a really good sample. The QCAA said this is a fantastic one. Do this, do that, and you'll do great. Um, there's also a little guide for how to write uh, a PSMT, how to set up your solve section um, with like a sort of a three-step uh, flow chart, I guess you might call it. And again, uh, lots of little uh, lots of little references to the ISMG because I really want students to talk about uh, to keep referring to those ISMGs and saying, okay, what am I trying to do? What's this sentence trying to do? What's this diagram trying to do? Why am I writing what I'm writing here? So uh, that goes for about two or three pages there. Uh, there's a bunch of other cool stuff in that uh, chapter as well. Uh, you'll find things like uh, the difference between observations and assumptions. Uh, spoke to a bunch of teachers in the lead up to this and there was frustration over and over again where students were saying something was an observation when it was an assumption or vice versa. So I've done a, at least tried my best to make a very clear distinction between the two of those. Uh, lots and lots of examples taken from subject reports about how to use, uh, how to demonstrate efficient use of technology. Um, four different ways that students can verify results with examples for those. Uh, having unpacked all of those subject reports and spoken to a bunch of teachers about this, found four really neat ways to verify results that um, can be applied to every PSMT, I think. So students can just grab their PSMT, solve it, and then refer to that page and go, oh, great, I can see one of these ways is particularly good for verifying these particular results. Um, and then guiding questions for strengths and limitations. So the idea here is that I've seen students struggle with strengths and limitations in the past. So you get a nice little guide for students to ask themselves questions about their PSMT and find ways to um, identify strengths and identify limitations. So super excited about it. Uh, really fun uh, appendix to write. Uh, thanks Cambridge for letting me do it. Um, also need to say thank you Oh, importance of assumptions as well. Also want to say thank you to um, the QCAA who really gave me a lot of time when I was writing this appendix. Every teacher in Queensland, uh, I asked lots of questions while I was writing this on our Facebook group and you all jumped in and gave me some ideas. So I really appreciate that as well. And I spoke to a bunch of students, so thank you to them as well. Um, check it out. It's in the new edition of the Cambridge textbooks and I'll hand back to Kim. The, uh, the first thing to note, of course, is that I'm not the only author. There's seven authors on these two books, and uh, there's a lot of involvement. Also, we have uh, a number of consultants which have helped us uh, in the writing as well, so we get as much input as we possibly can. I think one of the things that Joel spoke about uh, in particular was the, the fact that uh, there's more flexibility in the organisation of this course, and that should be something that's actually thought about fairly carefully in the way you do this. You've got a lot of freedom in uh, units one and two and it flows through to a certain extent in three and four as well so the way you organize your course uh, has there's more flexibility than the previous version okay so first of all this is out of the QCAA uh, document so it's nothing new to you in a way but in some ways we think about this when we're writing the book uh, teachers should plan teaching and learning sequences and allow time to revisit previously taught information and skills at several intervals uh, these repeated learning opportunities also provide opportunities for teachers to provide formative feedback to students. So this idea of being able to come back and do things, which is really the three three points sort of emphasise that, that revisiting ideas is very important. And this is particularly true uh, when you think about uh, we're heading towards that, um, that final assessment at the end. You want students to be able to hold material that they've got in year 11 which we well know is impossible without some sort of revisiting. You need to actually look back and see uh, and see what uh, is done in year 11 and practice those things as well. And the courses are designed around that point. 
the slide, please. Okay, we'll talk about mathematical methods first, and that will be my emphasis. Um, specialist maths is uh, certainly uh, the things I talk about here will actually flow through into specialist maths. I will address it, but not to the same length. Now, this slide here is something you've probably seen before because uh, I think it, uh, it comes directly from the QCA, that particular version of it. And another important thing is that they've actually cut down the amount of content in mathematical methods, one and two in particular, so you haven't got as much to visit. Um, you've got, uh, for instance, arithmetic and geometric sequences are now out of that course altogether, as is uh, discrete random variables. Now, uh, that will give you more time to, to do other things. So we've uh, organised the, the books around these units. Uh, even though you have more flexibility in Year 11, we've still kept to the unit structure so that we have the Unit 1 material together and, uh, and then the Unit 2 material. Um, it's worthwhile pointing out that um, things like exponential functions uh, and uh, you've got logarithmic functions is now taking a slightly different uh, form in, in 2025. Okay, three and four. Uh, it's a lot, it looks very different, doesn't it, when you do that? Um, <clears throat> in fact, it, uh, it was a three, five, the split, and now it's five, five, so it's nice and neat. Um, they're not all of equal length, um, so be careful about that. Uh, certainly things like uh, topics four and five in unit four aren't the same length as, say, topic five, four and five in unit uh, three. Sorry, I said four and five in four are not the same length as four and five in three. So be careful of that sort of allocation of time. There's recommendations, but you'll get the feeling for that as you get into the material too about how much is required. You can see there that uh, there's a development between years 11 and 12, and that should be taken into consideration carefully. Uh, how you can flow through the material and you can back up the material that you did in year 11 again in year 12. Okay, so we'll start on mathematical methods, units one and two. And um, just note to start with, there's assumed knowledge in uh, mathematical methods so one and two and for specialists one and two as well, uh, where there's quite a lot of uh, material from years nine and 10 and even earlier, which needs to be known. And so you need to actually revise that to some extent too. It will give them the opportunity. Uh, and uh, in the next slide, um, you'll see we've got these two chapters, which are not mathematical methods, units one and two. Um, they're things you'd do before you started. Uh, I know some schools use this as a come back after the holidays and know this really solidly. Because one of those points they made in that first slide, the QCAA, it's very important to have very well-grounded knowledge before you go on. All of these things in these two chapters, absolute prerequisites. You need to know this material before you can proceed successfully with uh, calculus courses. Uh, and so they can be done beforehand. I wouldn't try and squeeze them into the year as well because that just makes it crowded. So it's good if they can do some of these ideas before. This gives a, a revision material for this sort of thing be able to go over and make sure they're in place, their algebra is strengthened, and they're, they're ready to go for uh, the calculus courses. And as we go through, we cover some of the, um, the assumed knowledge. Um, for instance, uh, in Chapter 9, Probability, it, the prescribed knowledge is described the results of two- and three-step chance experiments. Well, they've done that before, but we don't assume they know it. Uh, I think that's the thing, and uh, I've taught long enough to know that a certain proportion of students do remember things they've done, everything they've done in previous years, but it's a reasonably small proportion. So it needs to be revised and gone over, uh, and uh, this gives them the chance to do that and to move on. Uh, it's interesting now that the, the QCA has chosen to have this as the main probability, the only probability in statistics section, really, and so it's very important, but I'll talk later on that we give an opportunity to maybe do a little bit more of this time or even after the course is finished. Also, um, you've got in sets of numbers and arithmetic, arithmetic absurds, uh, one of the prerequisites is understand the real number system has rational and irrational numbers. Well, we covered that in that, uh, that chapter. So it's done there, it's revised, and uh, it could well come in uh, use as the course uh, proceeds. 
there's a there is a, a definite new section. It was uh, wasn't in the first draft of the um, of the, uh, the syllabus, and it came out in the second. The people said they the students need CERDs when they're doing uh, technology for exams. So we've got a revision of CERDs. They possibly could have done some in year ten. Well, hopefully they've done some. And so this is just uh, revising this material, going through it. Uh, specialist maths has got a slightly more advanced section on CERDs because uh, even the pre prerequisite material for specialist maths it mentions that uh, rationalising the denominator with things like uh, A plus uh, C root B uh, uh, are required. So once you get to specialist maths, you need. But these are mostly they're fairly simple things. I don't think the expectation is that they become CERD experts, but on the other hand, they have to be familiar enough to be able to proceed. Uh, with the with the particular notation and use exact values when appropriate. So that's in technology free in particular, that will be required. Uh, <clears throat> even the uh, chapters themselves are reorganized. You'll notice this is a heading binomial expansion and cubic functions. That certainly wasn't a uh, chapter heading in the old book. Um, and in a, you'll go through and see the uh, the development there of cubic equations. There's a couple of big things there. Um, B and C are about the uh, binomial theorem. Um, I'll talk later that we actually have an appendix which gives you an opportunity to do a bit more if you want to uh, or if they need it. It's uh, two sections to cover that material, but that's all that's really required in the syllabus. So I, it was best here to actually keep to the to the actual uh, statement that they just need to be able to, really it's about doing the binomial theorem, to be able to expand brackets with uh, to the power n. Um, the other thing which is very noticeable is that down the end of this, you'll see division of polynomials and factorization of polynomials. That's been dropped out of the syllabus altogether. Um, I've left it there, um, and I say I, we, have left it there because some students may want to see it, but also in specialist maths, they're expected to be able to do uh, factorization of polynomials over the complex numbers. So you might be able to, and to use the factor theorem, um, to uh, to do it. So uh, you'll actually um, have it there that both the division, the 7J and 7K, are about the the division and then the factor theorem. So uh, the students can go back and, and look at that if they need to. It's not in the syllabus, though, so as, I've, as it's written there, it's optional. Well, things like this happened. We used to have one chapter on exponential and logarithmic functions, and now it's split into two because there's two topics in the syllabus, and there's a, a, really a, a need to actually do more logarithms in year 11 now because it's been de-emphasised. The actual basic logarithm work is not done to the same extent in year 12 in the syllabus as it was before. Uh, you introduce natural, uh, the natural logarithms in year 12, but here... Uh, we've done the two chapters, and that matches topics in the, the mathematical, mathematical methods units one and two structure. So it gives you the opportunity to uh, follow the uh, the topic structure, which uh, is always handy. You've got the syllabus and the chapters that match that, uh, but also to make sure that there's a bit more emphasis on logarithm functions in year, year 11. So uh, this sort of organisation goes on throughout. Okay, so really we're reporting, we're repeating the same thing here. The book is arranged according to the syllabus with each of Unit 1 and Unit 2 work followed by a revision chapter. Revision chapters are arranged with multiple choice and short response questions. That structure is different, divided into technology-free and technology-active sections and uh, simple familiar, complex familiar and complex unfamiliar type questions are indicated with a bar at the side of the page. So... Um, we followed the the structure of the syllabus carefully, and also to to have sections on technology free and technology active. Uh, we've tried to actually uh, make the technology active uh, really technology active, and uh, they'll need to use a calculator to to work on that. And I'll say a little bit more about that, but they are new questions designed to actually enforce use of calculator in a way, uh, and so that's they're all new. There's a lot of new questions in these books. Uh, differing from the the previous edition, so and this is one of the one of the areas where that's mainly come from. It's uh, a lot of them have come from the technology active uh, aspect of it. Thank you. Example of what it looks like: you can see there it's the same technology free short response questions. 
Uh, I think we're going to have a few more hyphens in the top line there as uh, time goes on, but uh, that's okay. Um, that that's, it was in final editing that's uh, being changed. So uh, I, I don't object to hyphens. We've gone along with that. So you can see the sort of questions that build up and strengthen the, the students' areas here. Uh, question two, by the way, is um, uh, the sort of thing that used to be used in the factor and remainder theorem, but you don't need that. It's just a matter of substituting in, obviously, to be able to do this question. So we avoid, actually, the factor theorem and remainder theorem through uh, unit one. And just a little snippet there of technology active questions. Uh, you'd be pretty mad to do that without a calculator. Um, I wouldn't, in fact, I wouldn't try it. And my reason is fairly good, but I, I wouldn't even start to think about doing that. And also in two, of course, once you're in that particular area of trigonometry, it's part of the trigonometry courses, then you need your calculator to work through that. Uh, we've also got investigations in the revision chapters. Uh, there's quite a number there. You can see that's number eight. Uh, that's a technology-oriented one. Um, it can be done uh, with fairly simple technology, but it's good if you can actually do little programs to actually have a go at it. But uh, not every not every one of our investigations requires a program. Uh, you can do it with spreadsheets, or you can do it just by uh, by using other randomization processes. Um, that one's an old favourite, and it's uh, it's actually quite satisfying to see um, when the man can walk off the edge of the cliff or not, if you call that satisfying. Hopefully, a lot of the time he misses it. Uh, and also, there's a revision of both units, so you'll find some sections where it's all mixed up uh, at the end of the, the book. So you've got that situation again where there's a continual opportunity to revise and go back over all the old material. Uh, and as I said, and the QCAA says, it's very important to keep on recycling through material, making sure that it's being reinforced. And there's multiple opportunities uh, in this course. The slight blue strip down the side there, by the way, is just the end of it. It's a banner on the edge of the page. Appendices, I mentioned these, and you'll see that uh, we've, we've put it, it's not in the course now. Um, both these things really were on the course. Uh, in the previous course, they're not there now. And we thought, will we throw those out? And my thought was, uh, and in conjunction with other authors, of course, that it's good for the students to have the opportunity if you've got time. Even at the end of uh, the year, uh, there might be a, a greater amount of, of an opportunity to, to go through that. Um, I've got that fascinating observation that we've got uh, no, it's right. It should be 751, the second uh, page number. It's interesting. I'm sure we've picked that up. Uh, this is still draft, but uh, on the other hand, it's good to actually see these things. So they're here. If you want to actually reinforce the idea of combinations, then it's here. There's a bit more opportunity to do some more probability um, in this context. So it can be done during the year. It might be done at the end of the year in preparation for them getting into the, uh, the units three and four cases. But it's taken out of the book. It's clear to the students that this is not part of the syllabus. They won't be saying, why aren't we doing this? Uh, it's being put separate so you can make the decision or a student can make the decision themselves. It's available to them to, to do it. Uh, there's also online dependencies and you uh, to act, their active access through the interactive textbook or PDF and their guides to the use of calculators. There's quite extensive online resources, and these actually help you build back through the material too, because you can actually hand them out at different stages. Uh, you don't actually have to give them out during the particular you know, topic you're doing. You can say, okay, go back and revise some trigonometry, revise some exponential functions, and hand them out later on to, to do that. So there's an assignment for each chapter. There's skill sheets throughout, which are just there to reinforce skills. That's what the name says, and it's meant to do that. Uh, video solutions for each worked example. That was in the old book too, but not in Specialist Maths. Now we've covered uh, all of the, the books with the video solutions. Uh, there's work solutions for uh, of all questions, which is handy for both uh, teachers and the students. And uh, they'll be available, uh, obviously, with the publication of the book too. And a number of tests, three to four, uh, for each chapter with short response and multiple choice questions. They'll be redesigned from the previous ones, 
so that you get uh, those two headings, the short response and multiple choice questions. So they'll be designed around that and the levels of difficulty will be also built in. So uh, sample problem solving and modelling tasks, or PSMT as we say, um, then they've, they've been there in the past and they give you something to, uh, to build from. You mightn't choose to do exactly what's there, but it gives you some ideas, practice probably to actually be able to go on. And the other thing we did was practice exams for each unit and for the entire course. And they, obviously you can't use them for an assessment, but you can give them to students to, uh, to have a revision of the whole course. So they can be used in the same way just to keep on going back over material and uh, reinforcing. And in year 11, that's particularly important. You just want to keep on going over things as with many opportunities as you possibly have. Oops, I think we should, okay. The online quizzes uh, have all been revised. Um, I can actually say they're a lot better than they used to be. Um, that uh, we've actually worked on this um, for in other contexts as well. So we now have 10 questions in each section and uh, they're more reliable and they're more to the point. So they've all been gone through and we're still going through that editing process, obviously. Uh, but they'll be stronger than they were before. So they're available there for, for the teacher for the teacher and the student to get instant feedback uh, in that way. I think, can I just go back one slide? I'm sorry, just go back one now too. Go back one, please. Yes, thank you. Um, ah, that's interesting. So there, there is another thing too that uh, is, um, there's, there's online uh, testing with... Um, it's not in this thing. So just to, to comment on it, there's also Cambridge now have a way of uh, producing uh, sample exam questions too. And that will be either the three, four courses in particular. So I'll talk about that again later on. So we'll proceed now. Thank you. Okay, calculator. There's calculator examples all the way through besides the, um, the actual appendices. Um, with calculators, I... It's nice that they can become familiar with calculators before they get to year 12 properly. And if you can manage it, it's nice to do it in years nine and 10 a bit um, because it takes a while to become fluent with a calculator. Calculators should not dominate courses. They should be a tool that you just bring in at a particular time. And the only way to do that is to become more and more familiar with what they're capable of. So when they get to uh, year 11, it would be nice uh, if they have familiarity with basic operations and how to use functions and graphs. Uh, that's the ideal situation. I know it's not always possible, but that's the ideal situation uh, for them to be ready. Certainly by year 12, they should be ready to go with all aspects of it. There's a few things up in sampling, for instance, which are a bit more complicated with the calculator, and they can be left to uh, year 12. But uh, the rest uh, is you'd want familiarity with basic operations and all of these things. And there, we've got the binomial uh, distribution, which is uh, really year 12. Okay, mathematical units three and four. <clears throat> um, there's there's quite a big section of of uh, topics out of year, um, year 11. Uh, there's six chapters, actually, and they're shaded green. That's the same as in the old book. Uh, it's the, the reality is, is that students do not remember everything they've done before. And you can use them that way. You can get them to do things during the holidays. You can take some time during the course at the beginning to do it. You haven't got that much time. I know that. But they can flip back into this and uh, revise some of those ideas too. So there's quite a chunk of material there. Uh, they're big books. We've got enough pages to do this. Uh, and uh, you can actually refer students back to this or set them during the holidays uh, in between. And there'd be, we know there are some students who do that. Uh, just to make sure they're in that strong situation. Other students might, might need to be encouraged a little bit during the year to go back and look at particular things when you find weaknesses, but they're available to you. So there's uh, six chapters there uh, ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, one of the things, yeah, is quite important. If you look at the bottom, really this whole slide is the bottom line. Uh which means use assumed knowledge from units one and two. And I know that the examiners will always use huge discretion in the way they apply that sort of thing, because it's very mean to ask questions from deep in units one and two in a final year exam. But the, the point is that they can, uh, and so they have to be familiar with those ideas. 
basically, uh, the Year 11 course builds up the basic structure for the Year 12 course. So it's not a totally unreasonable thing because it's quite likely they will use some of the assumed knowledge from Units 1 and 2 in the examination. It's quite likely. And um, in, in fact, I would say certain. And uh, that means that those first six chapters have a real role, even though they're not part of the structure for three and four, they're there to, to be familiar with. It's things they should know. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, now I'm just, uh, with three and four, we just carefully match the uh, the chapters with the, with the unit topics. And that's marked clearly so the student can actually see exactly that they're doing a particular aspect of the syllabus each time. And that's very important. It gives them security and uh, it knows, uh, gives them an idea of what to look at. Okay. Uh, each chapter has a review section. And um, look, this is true of um, the mathematical methods uh, one and two. And so you've got that um that structure where uh, you've got technology free, short response, techno technology active, uh, short response, and the same for the multiple choice. Um, and interestingly, organized is spelt with a Z there, so it's just to keep us entertained. Okay, thank you. So you see the, uh, the multiple choice uh, there and technology active, and that's taken out of the sampling proportions uh, section where you'll use the, uh, the calculators at the ends of the earth, basically. It's all about calculators. Uh, and so that section is quite strong there. The, the really quite phony section is the technology uh, neutral section, the one where you technology free section. Uh, it's here where the real guts are, is there and where the most likely exam questions come from. Okay, so um, online resources, mathematical methods, units three and four, Got the same thing all the way down, but this time, in actual fact, there is an emphasis on the exam generator tool containing past examination questions and exam-like uh, questions. Uh, and that's that's proved very popular where it's been introduced uh, around the country that uh, now we get uh, the opportunity for students to look back on exam questions and, and answers as they proceed through or for you to use it to form tests. So uh, that's a, a brand new a brand new feature. Um, the, we've reorganized the, um, the revision chapters so that you actually, uh, topics are sort of separated off. Uh, so it means that when you've got this choice of three out of five, it means you can actually say, do these sections. They're not all mixed up, which in some ways has uh, its problem, but, uh, it means that they can, you can actually say, do these sections out of the revision chapter. So it's organised that way or ready for you to go. And that's part of this new flexibility and the greater time you've got. Okay, so we just talk about new features very quickly, math methods and specialist maths. Um, we've got learning intentions, everyone's favourite thing. And I know that in some schools they were getting people to put this up on the board before they start their, their class. And I guess this will make life easier for you. Um, to to do that, so there's an intent for each section now. That that's a bit different to what we had before. Okay, there's a skills checklist uh, where uh, it just uh, the student can use this to just uh, ask themselves, "Do I know this stuff?" And then references back into the chapter where they can actually look it up if they don't know what in the world that means. So it uh, it can be useful, and for some students, I'd imagine very useful. For others who've worked through, probably not quite so useful, but. The, uh, it's, a, it's another tool that the, uh, the teachers and students can use. Uh, keep me on uh, repeating that to the ends of the earth. We'll just uh, keep going. Specialist maths. Okay. Um, specialist maths, the changes are actually uh, not as massive and the, the course size has not diminished that bit. There's a few things like connected particles on the, on, on the plane and a bit less of proof. Uh, it's still, um, the proof in year 11 is the same. Uh, and it's good to build that up and it helps their structure, but that dem demolishes. Also less circle theorems is another area where uh, it's uh, it's being cut down. Uh, so there's not as much difference in this course. And it's really that nice structure into uh, five and five, which I think everyone likes. And then three and four, uh, you can see there, um, again, the five and five, uh, not massive amounts of difference in uh, 
in in content, but uh, you've got the um, the split in that way, and those couple of topics which are diminished. Okay. Um, again, it just starts off. You can see that it starts off in special students one and two. We've got revision chapters to start off with, and we'll just keep running through. Uh, Algebra, if you want to do specialist maths, your algebra has to be good. It doesn't matter if you've got a calculator or not. Your algebra has to be good to understand the things. And this gives them a, students a big opportunity to make sure they're strengthening it. Again, it can be done uh, before the year starts or uh, it can be done uh, just at the beginning of a course very quickly, but you actually haven't got that much time to do these things. So it's good to say do the whole, during the holidays, have a go at this, see what happens. Um Again, you've got uh, such things. You can see the usual. That's a chapter strict now of the course. <clears throat> okay, so um, first four chapters contain a review of material for which is useful uh, for specialist maths and one and two, and can be used for preliminary studies. Uh, chapter five is a revision of that, and there are a number of appendices which we use as further preparation. So again. That's on the next page. You'll see a couple of them there. These are things which aren't in the syllabus anymore. Appendix A wasn't the syllabus, but it's been cut out, which is quite sensible in many ways because it's in math methods in theory. But because their trigonometry has to be good, and it's a difficult topic, uh, I think most people have found this always quite, uh, students find it totally difficult, that you, they can go back over this and revise the basics in the same book. And the same thing with uh, the graphing techniques. They're things they have to know about in year 12. And it means if they've got time to look at this, they've had a quick look before year 12 starts and they know about these ideas. Uh, look at that for a dose of appendices. Uh, there's, not, uh, there's no study of motion in a straight line in the year 11 course. It gives them a chance. There's no statistics in the year 11 course. It gives them a chance to look at that if they've got time and you've got time, but it builds on that. I know that's emphasising things which aren't in the course, but on the other hand, uh, they're things which can be used uh, at different stages if you choose to do so. And there we have the same structure as before. Thanks so much, Michael. Uh, I'll just roll a few slides uh, before we run into the Q&A session. Um, and, and just the basics, you know, if the, um, at least get some pricing and... Uh, the, the landing page down the bottom here that you can see underneath the, the textbooks is definitely the, the one portal that you all need to have access to everything that we have and will create uh, as the months pass before the books are published. It will all land on that landing page, so make sure that you have access to it. Our publication dates are, as you can see, between uh, really August and October, you can expect to see these books arrive. Next slide, thanks. And the prices uh, changed a little, so up to $79.95 now for the print and digital and the digital only, $63.95. The following one, uh, General Mass. I just wanted to remind everyone of the General Mass webinar that's coming up on July 17. If you haven't already registered, make sure you do. There is a link to that registration in our website, but also you'll be able to access it if you go to the landing page. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just a little intro, if you don't know who we are, which I would be very surprised of, um, I'm Kim Keane and I am Gold Coast, Brisbane Metro, and all the way up in the far northern area of Queensland. Annie, of course, is Brisbane and Sunshine Coast, and we've got Deb Wilson now on our team, which is wonderful, and she looks after Toowoomba and all the way between Bundaberg and Home Hill. So any of us are available for you. So we'll move into the Q&A and I want to now introduce and welcome Scott Halligan as well and also Cameron Pico, who you might have seen if you were in the webinar last week, our Essentials webinar. So welcome to you both there, the publishers on these books. So both very important figures for us here at Cambridge. And welcome back to Joel and Michael. Thanks, Kim. That's the first time I think I've been called an important figure. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I can see Scott is there. I know you were having some tech issues, but it seems okay now. Um, we've had a lot of uh, great questions come in, so thanks everyone. I've tried to, we've both tried to answer as many as we could while we were here. Um, the first one, I, 
uh, during Joel, your presentation, um, there was just we were talking about the sort of the, the fact that there's no maximum time. But Angela's just asked, is there a minimum suggested time for a PSMT? Because too much time could be wasted by some students. No, they haven't provided any minimum, um, and I, I wouldn't provide a, a minimum either. Um, it does feel like if you're going to do drafting, which you you've got to do some kind of feedback somewhere in the middle. It does feel like four weeks is is the minimum. I can't imagine doing it in less time, but I'd be happy to be proven wrong by by people in the chat. But four does feel like it does feel like the minimum. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, so I'll just go through the questions. Uh, Michael, we have from Allison. Are the books in the exact order of topics? They virtually are. Once you get to year 12, the answer is yes. There's a little bit of flexibility in unit one uh, where there's a choice about whether you do functions and cubics first or cubics and functions. So uh, there, I think uh, it might be in the opposite order, but it's a matter of choice, really. It can be done in the other way, but uh, we've, we've chosen to reverse one order. But virtually, yes, yes. Virtually the whole thing's in the order of topics. Uh, certainly in year 12, completely in the order. Michael, um, there's a question here about uh, notation in relation to the probability of an event. Could you talk about uh, changes to notation in this edition, not just probability, but uh, throughout um, in terms of uh, the uh, relationship to how things are expressed in the in the syllabus? Okay, there's been no there's been no huge change in our notation. Um, that that is true. Uh, obviously, we're following what the syllabus says. I think you might be talking about the P and PR. That's uh, correct. Uh, yeah, I'm, that, I'm not um, sure. We have not changed the PR, that's but uh, that's, uh, I wouldn't have thought that would be terribly uh, disturbing. It sort of is clearer to uh, to readers. Uh, if we thought that was a break, we might change it in the year 12 anyway. So um, uh, it, does the person feel disturbed by the PR? They didn't I mean, say that specifically. <laughs> No, it's just will the, will the textbook use PR again instead of P as given? Uh, we'll be using PR That's again in the textbook share. Um, so we have, uh, oh, there were some questions on the uh, technology free, technology active. I feel like uh, you answered quite a bit of them already. But um, so Daniel asked, uh, are the questions labeled as that in the exercise? Um, I, my quick answer is that at the end of each chapter, the chapter reviews. Yeah, the review section is where it's done. There's not question by question during the sections. It's in the review sections. That's clearly indicated there. And my feeling on this is that the at the stage during the sec on during the sections, then there's often a choice about whether a question is really technology active or technology free. Uh, we want to have the opportunity when the students concluded the uh, the section to be able to go through and say, okay, here it's being marked as that before I've had the experience of making the choice. Uh, and making the choice is a very important part. It's well known with calculators. Successful calculator users are ones who can make choices. They know when to, to go for the keys and when not to. So that's part of the ongoing uh, process too. The ones at the end of the book, which are marked calculator active they're at the end of the section, are really calculator active. But uh, the ones during the, the sections themselves, they can be the student or teachers can make that choice. Michael, there's a question here also about the new formula sheet. Could you talk a little bit about how that has impacted the uh, the new additions, the, the new advice on that from QCAA? Well, we've looked carefully at the formula sheets and they've kept on giving us updates as they've gone through. So we're following the, the formula sheets as a whole carefully. And the, so the notation, for instance, in trigonometry will be exactly the same as the formula sheets where students get confused if it's... Uh, the wrong letters are used. So we followed that uh, pretty assiduously throughout uh, without, uh, without the books. And certainly in year 12, there'll be even more emphasis on that when they're heading towards that examination. We'll make sure that everything is exact. Something else that we didn't mention, Michael, I don't think, but um, another thing to uh, that you and the your co-authors uh, changed throughout the new editions across the four units is the um, all multiple choice questions have uh, four options now um, instead of five. Yeah, it's all been done, yes. There's still, there's four options now. Yep. Four options, Cam, but lots of all the books here. Yep. Cam, any other questions? 
Yeah, there, there's a, there's a few. So for someone's asked about four alternate sequence schools, when is the three and four book coming out? So that is the year after, because uh, it's being worked on currently. Um, so we we didn't give a date because it's still early stages for the three and four. At the moment. They're certainly being worked on now, though. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Michael, you touched on this uh, briefly already when talking about some of the appendix material, but in the body of the textbook itself, um, there was a question here about uh, the uh, from Chris O. Current texts contain a lot of non-syllabus content. Has that been improved? Uh, the answer is we've looked at the syllabus and we're following the syllabus in the sections. Look, there's always a question, uh, and you've got these things called uh, complex unfamiliar questions. The, the thing about it, in fact, complex familiar, that allows examiners to stretch people into areas which are not certain. So to restrict questions to a huge degree is, is troublesome. Uh, in fact, I've seen in, in some of the exam papers that they actually form a little bit of theory before you go on with it. Uh, so we're making sure that we cover it. Uh, one of the uh, the things always with uh, examination syllabuses is that you want to do a little bit too much rather than a little bit too less, because that's uh, that's when people really get upset when uh, their things are sprung upon them which they have not seen at all. So look, it, it stretches to the end, and uh, that's uh, I think that's the necessary part of a good textbook is that uh, you've actually got that ability to go a little bit further sometimes. So. Yes, we've looked at the syllabus carefully. Everything's considered. A lot of sections have been cut out, uh, all those sorts of things. So you'll always be able to match the syllabus to sections. But do the questions sometimes stretch a little bit further? I hope so, yeah. Yep. And um, this one, probably best for you, Kim. Uh, Cameron and I, Michael and others, have been working on the uh, page proofs uh, a lot. It's been one of our main uh, preoccupations over the past few months and for Michael in the past couple of years. Um, Kim, in relation to the availability of page proofs, uh, there's a question from Rob P. Uh, will page proofs be made available before the official uh, release dates? Mm -hmm. So the answer to that is yes, and they will be digital page proofs that we will make available on the landing page. Um, so as soon as they are loaded there, and they're, they're not that far away, are they, Scott? We're talking no, no they're, they're very, very close. Yeah, yeah. you will yeah. be notified, Rob. So as soon as anything comes through, uh, we will certainly let you know via email. But call me any time too. Um, I can certainly keep you up to date with anything. Always love to hear from you, Rob. All right, I think we're getting to the uh, end of the questions. Cameron, mm -hmm. any any others? Uh, just two sort of more comments, I guess, from people. But um, uh, the Lizzie who raised the PR versus P probability thing did just flag that students find the inconsistency of that confusing. So that's something we can take on board. Um, and Angela's just said, uh, thanks, Joel, for the PSMT work. I think it's going to help teaching how to do it much easier. All right, Kim, I think that that might be it. On behalf of Cambridge, thank you to Michael, Joel, both Scott and Cam, of course, for your time this evening. And thank you all for taking the time to come along tonight. I really hope you all have something valuable that you're leaving the webinar with this evening. Uh, and don't forget, we have our general mass webinar in week two of term three. That's July 17. If you haven't already booked in, please do that. And remember that your registration uh, can be made via our website or use that landing page uh, URL that we share so very often. Um, you will receive a recording of this webinar as well via email with some links and info on the help widgets, uh, which you'll find also at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen anytime that you're in the platform or using any of our products. Yeah, You'll find a huge amount of videos and guides for navigating anything that you may need while using the platform. So you'll also have the opportunity to share any feedback or questions you might have from this evening, and we'd really love to hear from you. So that's a tool that we really do use, and uh, we really do read through all of the feedback from all of you. We want you to be happy with what you're receiving. So on behalf of Cambridge, thank you all for coming along this evening, as always. Uh, stay safe and enjoy your evening. All the very best. Thank you.